Hey folks, how's it going? Welcome back. And today I've got that camo wood stock that I used on the SKS test fire video that I had picked up locally from some guy just already painted this way. Uh, thank you for those that pointed out that I did a terrible job on the camo uh, because I didn't even paint it. So, But now you can tell me I do a terrible job at restoring it back to original wood because that's what we're going to do in this video today. So I use a standard uh, razor blade, just utility blade. Whetstone, got a fine and of course some sort of hardened uh, steel tool. And I got my garbage can right here just to shave paint off into. Should be interesting to see what we've got going on down here. That's normally where the bayonet uh, slit or slot is. Uh, kind of cut in there. The reason I'm doing this is because 83% of the votes that I received on the poll that I posted in my community tab on my channel said, yeah, I'd watch that. So 83% of you said you'd watch it. That's why I'm doing it. So for an older razor blade, one that you want to put a burr on, you'll take your whetstone, it could be a file, anything you need to get a, a real fine edge on it. And then with your hardened tool, you will run it down the edge to get your edge to fold over to one side. Chalking up in a vise, Get a lot more leverage on there. So you just need to kind of curl that. Edge that you made over. When you get a little burr on there, it grabs that paint or old finish, doesn't matter. Grabs it a lot better. So you can see just a few swipes in that area down to bare wood. So I've got my burr on there and we'll just scrape this paint off. It doesn't have to be paint, right? It could be an old finish, you know, like an old varnish, uh, shellac, anything like that. You can just scrape off to get down to fair wood. I'm not a huge fan of sanding. Just sanding creates so much dust that to me it just becomes inconvenient. Raised blade or edged metal that you can get a burr on to one side. It's just way more convenient for me. And I just do it right into my garbage can right here. So I'll do this for a bit. Might take a couple rounds of putting another edge on this, uh, folding it over to get a burr, going for you know, quite a bit, and then redoing it. So you gotta keep redoing this every once in a while. So another thing I like about this method is, you know, when sandpaper loses its uh, its grit, it's it's done. Right? You can try to keep using it, but for the most part, when it loses its grit, its scratch, its cutting ability, it's done. When an edge loses its scratch, or its cutting ability, you can just Put a new burr on it and you know i've been using this razor blade for probably a few years just getting <clears throat> excuse me getting you know old finishes off of guns just getting down to a, a rough wood now i will eventually use sandpaper to uh, take out some of the tooling marks you know if you catch an edge just right you'll leave a line in there 
uh, so sandpaper will eventually blend stuff in. But you know, if you if you like sandpaper, go ahead and use sandpaper. This is just the way I do it. It's more than one way to skin a cat. There's definitely more than one way to refinish a gun stock. Here's that section where the bayonet normally runs. Like I say, it kind of looks like some sort of Bondo wood filler type product. So that'll be coming out. So this was some uh, pretty durable paint. This is a really good paint job. Old finish, you know, like shellac or varnish or anything like that comes off way easier. Uh, for one, this is in multiple coats because it's overlaid that camo pattern, whereas, and like thick coats, whereas varnish, shellac, any true oil, anything like that is in, it might be a few coats, but the coats are much thinner. So it, it just glides right off. This, I'm actually having to put uh, a good amount of pressure on, which means I'm also having, having to put a burr on this more frequently. So normal wood finishes are way easier than this, just so you're aware. This paint right here is pretty stiff. It's, uh, it seems to be real thick right here on this part of the stock. Since it's going into acetone anyway, one way that you can kind of soften up the finish of an area that you're scraping is to just kind of douse it in acetone. Pretty good. On this paint right here, a little start, you know, getting in there, dissolving, softening it up. And then you can go back at it with your blade. And it's taking off some pretty good size chunks. And it feels a little bit softer. It's not having to press as hard. Because it's, it's pretty thick right here. Another thing you can do, uh, seems to work pretty good with old wood finishes, is you can take that same acetone and a scrubby, it's still wool, I'm not sure what, uh, this is pretty coarse stuff. You can take your steel wool and your acetone. And on old wood finishes, if you're just trying to get down to wood, it does a pretty good job. Paint is a different story. And I'm not a fan of the, I've used the, the gels, you know, the finish removing gels and all those. I'm just not a fan. Nothing against them. A lot of people like them. Not me. So I moved to a <clears throat> newer razor blade. So like I said, I've been using this old one for a few years now, but I've like worn down now past all the original edge and it was making it harder to harder and harder to get a burr on this one. Whereas this nice, fine razor sharp edge, I can get a real nice burr on there now. And I mean, it almost feels like I'm peeling a potato. It's grabbing a hold of that paint. It's pretty good.
All right, so we're gonna get started on the acetone bath. First off is I got the majority of the paint off. There's still some remnants, you know, where it ran with the acetone and steel brush, but that'll take care of that. Uh, left the wood filler Bondo stuff in there. Hopefully acetone will seep into the wood, get behind that so it'll peel right out. I'll get some aluminum foil over that and I'll let that sit overnight. We'll, uh, we'll get back to it in the morning, see what it looks like. All right, so it's been about 16 hours sitting in that acetone. Let's take a look. That uh, wood filler stuff is real swollen up. Wanted to get out of there. Looks like any remaining paint is gonna just take a little bit of scrub to get it off. All right, let's go ahead and take this guy out and see what's going on with the wood filler. Looks like it's all swollen up. Looks like it should just lift right out. Yeah, pretty soft. I feel like the paint has produced a, a more unique challenge than old gunstock finish. This paint is definitely a lot more durable, held to the wood and in the pores a lot better than normal gunstock finish. And it might be because it's green, right? Whereas normal gunstock finish is clear. And it just doesn't show up as good when you're cleaning it off. So you feel like you've got it more cleaned off. But my acetone also could be used up. I've been using that acetone for quite a while. But... A little scrubbing here and there, we're getting there. Well, folks, we're getting there. To be honest, I don't know if I'll ever do a painted one again. This has been, painted has been a pain. Uh, it's looking pretty decent though. Been uh, scrubbing and wiping and scrubbing and wiping. And now I'm just getting in all the little nooks and crannies in there with my razor blade trying to get it <clears throat> trying to get it as cleaned out as possible I don't think it'll get 100% alright so I'm I'm done picking and prodding at this thing I don't think I'll ever get all the paint out of there but our wood is in pretty rough shape right now there's uh, some feathering going on not very smooth there's some stuff I gotta do with this sling mount but now is the time if you need to make any drastic changes, whether it's shaping, drilling, filling holes, anything like that. Now's the time to do it before you start sanding. And really the only thing I'm gonna do is, when I was getting that filler stuff out of this sling mount slot, uh, the holes got kind of reamed out so screws don't bite very good in there. So I'm going to drill them out a quarter inch bit and put 
quarter inch dowel in there to make it flush. And then I also bought a side swivel sling mount that I was able to find online. And then I'll put that on there, mark some new holes, drill. That way the screws that I have will bite down into there. This sling mount is kind of corroded, got some rust on it, which if you've been watching anything related to this River SKS series, uh, I'm not afraid of rust anymore. <laughs> that fear is long gone. But I'll, I'll scrape this a little bit, boil it, get it down to get it to black. So to glue those dowel rods in there, there's a, a couple things I do. First is, I'm a fan of Gorilla Glue. I like how it expands into crevices and cracks and just has a really good hold. That's what I use. You can use whatever glue you want. Wood glue would work just fine. For the dowels, I take a, a little pair of pliers with some, some teeth on them and I'll just and I go around and put some divots in there for glue to expand in, some channels so it can run down the whole thing. And then with the Gorilla Glue, I did some tests a while back mixing it with water. And so when it expands, it gets a lot of bubbles in it. And it seems like there's a certain ratio of water that you use that it becomes more dense and less airy. There's not as many air bubbles in it. So I'll probably put a few drops of glue in each of these holes, put one drop of water in there, kind of mix it up with this little toothpick, and then I'll put my dowel rods in there and uh, clamp them down. Because if you don't clamp them down, the expansion of the Gorilla Glue wants to push them out. And as you press down, you'll probably have some, uh, some glue that presses out of there. Should be enough to expand. Clamp that down. And um, just so I know it's on both of them, tight. Let's get this sling mount looking decent. Uh, it's got some, got some orange on it, got some pitting on it. But, uh, see if we can get that cleaned up. So I've got some hot water here, ready to boil. And first I wanna degrease and get some of the bigger chunks of crud and rust off of that. So I'm gonna use acetone. This is some of the used acetone that uh, we used to soak the stock in. You find I like acetone for a lot of things. You can reuse it, multi-use, right? I don't know how many times I say in my videos multi-use. But uh, yeah, I'll just uh, degrease it a little bit, give it a little scrub. Get some of the bigger stuff off. All right, so degreased and it's got a real thin, fine layer of rust on it. Uh, it looks, I don't know if you can see, but it's got like an orangish hue all over the place. So I will get this water boiling and probably boil it for about half hour or so. All right, so I boiled this part a little longer than half hour. It might have been 45 minutes. Got busy doing other things. But uh, now I'm going to use a carding wheel. It's nice and soft. This is not a wire wheel. 
Um, I can stick my fingers in this. So. For the little nooks and crannies, I just use uh, steel wool, even some pipe cleaners. Just getting the, <clears throat> the fuzz off that the boiling caused. The red rust turned to black oxide and it makes like a fuzz that you can then just buff or card or brush off. So the boiling will never get rid of uh, pitting, right? Because pitting is metal that has disappeared. It's gone, it's rusted away, you can't bring it back. But it takes that rust and turns it to black oxide, which makes everything shiny. So it's just a super old bottle of mineral oil. <clears throat> Apply a nice liberal coat. And then I'm just gonna let it sit for a little bit before I wipe off the excess. All right, this stuff is has been sitting for a little while. I'm gonna wipe uh, the excess oil off of that side sling mount. And let's take a look at this. Gorilla glue. So as you can see, the glue has expanded quite a bit and we'll just trim that up make it flush and then we'll be able to put our sling swivel mount on that turned out pretty good too like I said you're not gonna get any uh, pitting back can't get metal back that's not there but it's a nice uniform black color now no rust So this is what I do. So I'll put in my piece, just a kind of a rough crosshair, and then I'll take a little punch, drop it on that center mark. Just give a little tap, press it in if you want to. So that'll give a place for your screw to like seat and not want to slip out anywhere. And then a couple things with screws. And drill in your hole. So screws have a minor and a major diameter. So your major is from outside of thread to outside of thread. Your minor is the insides of those threads. So just the shaft in the middle of the threads. The hole you drill, you should want to be as close to your minor diameter as possible. That way the only thing biting as the screw goes in is the threads. And you're not, you know, splitting the wood with too small of a hole. It's not grabbing with too big of a hole. You want it to be about that minor diameter. Also, you don't need to drill very deep of a hole. The only depth you need to get to is so your piece right because you're not going to go clear to the, the head of the screw so it's your piece to the tip so I will put a piece of masking tape about right here and we'll drill a couple holes All right, got my holes drilled. And I wanna take this time to point out, it's okay if you make a mistake. 
as you can see I've got two different dowels here one right there one right there one right there one right there first go around didn't line up so well but it's easy to just drill your hole out glue another dowel in there and just redo the process another thing i like to do just a little johnson paste wax put a little bit on that screw and after you have run those in and out a few times should have nice matching thread pitch in there there you go side sling swivel mounted all right before we get sanded just wanted to update you that hole that was in the stock plug that up uh, put some Gorilla Glue and clamped big crack that was up here along the top. So got all that done. Now it's ready for some sanding. I'm going to start with 220 grit. It's already fairly soft, so I don't need to shape or take anything down too much. So I'll go 220, and depending on how I feel, we'll go to a 320. I've got a soft sanding block, a small wooden one and a bigger one just to maintain uh, nice straight angles and corners don't want to like round those over or anything so i just got done sanding at 220 grit and now i'm going to wipe it down with a wet rag and i do that for a few reasons the first is to remove the really fine sawdust that's in the pores of the wood. It does a good job cleaning that out. Second is to give you a look at what the wood would look like if you just put a finish on it without a stain. It would be that roughly that same color. And three, <clears throat> excuse me, it raises the grain. So after you wipe it with a wet rag, I'll uh, heat gun, dry it, it makes uh, the grain of the wood kind of stand up, anything that's just laying down from sanding. And then I'll probably do a, another pass just to make sure everything's completely smooth. Do another pass with the sandpaper, I'm talking, make sure everything's completely smooth and we'll go from there. But I'll show you maybe what the stock would look like if I don't do uh, a stain on it. Any rag will work. Hot, cold water, doesn't matter. So if I were to just put a finish on it, it would be kind of a blonde, light blonde color. So there's the contrast. So if I were to just put finish on it, it would be that color. There is some greens still popping out down in the pores that I'm not going to get rid of. But for that reason, I think I might put a light coat of stain just to blend that, that green in. And now just running your hand over it, you can feel just some little feathers that kind of popped up on the wood. So I'll go back over it. I'll probably stick with 220 grit. All right, let's throw some stain on this uh, stock. I got some dark walnut 
and it's not officially this dark walnut 2716 from Minwax. It's kind of some other stuff that's been mixed in there as well, but it turns out pretty good. So let's just throw some on there and we'll see how it turns out. I'm hoping the, the darker color will hide any of the greens in there that didn't get all the way out with the acetone. And we'll probably go put this coat on, let it soak in, come back if we want it to be a little darker. But yeah, that appears to be hiding or blending in the green. I'll go over the top hand guard again because it's a little a little lighter. Try to match that up a little better. That's uh matches pretty good. Alright. Set that there to dry and We'll get to in about a day or so. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and put some finish on this. I normally just use true oil. It's good stuff. This is kind of old. There's some dry stuff in there, but looks like I'll have enough to put a coat on. And we're gonna basically just slather this on until it stops soaking it up because you want it to soak in as much as possible to the wood so I'll let that soak in a little bit and I'll move on to this main piece here All right, so I got my first heavy coat on. It was able to soak in a little bit into the wood, but it's almost like the true oil started to turn tacky before it fully absorbed into the wood. And because it started turning tacky, I've got you know smudges and fingerprints and different stuff. I tried to level them all out by kind of lightly going over it. But there's, there's some imperfections in there, some real noticeable imperfections. So I will be getting those out with some very light sanding and multiple coats. They'll, they'll come right out with light sanding and multiple coats. But we will pick that up next time. All right, so it's, uh, it's been some time, but the first coat on these is plenty dry. And like I said, there's some imperfections fingerprints, not really any runs, but kind of some smudges. So to blend that all in, we're gonna take some sandpaper, and I use true oil, like I've said, and we are going to uh, fill the pores, get rid of imperfections, all that. And the way that I do that is, I've got some 320 grit here, most people recommend a higher grit, but I just go over it really lightly. And what we're going to do is sand the piece very lightly, very lightly, just a little bit, go over it, and it'll build up like a dust uh, of the 
the first coat of finish that we put in there. Maybe a little bit of sawdust if you happen to, to wear through, but hopefully you don't since we've got stain on here. And if you wear through, you might wear through the stain, get down to bare wood. You don't want that. But a lot of people wet sand, like they'll put a, <clears throat> put a coat of true oil on and then they'll like sand it in to create dust to fill pores, you know, get a nice smooth finish. I, I prefer dry sanding just so I can see where I've sanded. And then as you're putting the true oil on, you can see exactly where you've been. So we'll start with this piece here, your hand guard. And again, you are incredibly lightly sanding. I'm not putting hardly any pressure on there at all. It's basically just enough to get white powdery scratchy substance on there. You just lightly want to get that over a majority of the piece. You don't have to get like see there's a there's a strip right there that I didn't get. You don't have to get everything. This is just creating dust for the whole piece to fill pores. And we'll be doing this a few times. I, I really can't stress enough how lightly I am pressing. Especially with 320. You know, a lot of people use six, eight hundred grit to do this. Where you can press a little harder. But so as you can see, we've got a white scratchy film over the entire thing. Now we'll take our true oil or whatever you use and you're just going to do very sparingly and see as you rub that dust is gathering with the true oil and is filling in Scratches, pores, taking out imperfections. All right, so we'll set that aside, and we'll do the same thing with the with the main stock. Big flats, it's easy to have very little pressure. Right? You're just barely touching. As things get like sharper and have more of a, a point to them, you've really got to be careful not to press too hard. Because I mean, especially with this first coat that you did, it doesn't take anything at all, depending on your grit, to get through that and then start getting through stain. So the sanding kind of knocks down imperfections. And then when you put another coat of true oil with all this dust, it kind of fills them in. So you're kind of you're kind of doing two things at once in this step here. Knocking them down and then filling up any little valleys or, or gaps that are in there. So we're pretty much all white and powdery. Now this step isn't necessary or required, but with all the stocks that I've finished, this just doing this a few times 
makes a it makes a world of difference in the in the quality when you actually feel it. And I'm just gonna do a drop, really a drop at a time. So we're not wanting to go real thick with these. Let those sit. I'll give it a day, make sure it's good and dry, and we'll get back at it tomorrow. All right, time for a, another sanded in coat. Again, I'm using my 320, and very, very, very light pressure. And the more filled up pores get, the easier it is or the farther a single drop of whatever finish you're using will go because every coat that gets filled or all the pores that get filled you're decreasing the surface area of the piece Occasionally your sandpaper may kind of gum up, just give it a brush. All right, <clears throat> another coat done. See you tomorrow. All right, so let's uh, let's get a third coat on here, and it's looking pretty good. <clears throat> I'm thinking this will be my my last coat. So that's the third and I'm going to say final coat of true oil on there. So we'll let this dry for about a day, make sure it's good and dry, and we will pick up from there. We will just rub some paste wax on this stock. Just Get you some on your fingers, rub it all over. Again, we'll let this kind of like dry, haze over, and then buff it off with just uh, some random towel.
We'll just uh, we'll let those set for 10, 15 minutes. Probably doesn't need to be that long, but and then come back and buff them off. All right, it's been about 15 minutes, so we're just gonna buff everything off. And to tell you the truth, I don't know if this step really does anything, but for one, I like the smell of Johnson Pace Wax. <laughs> and I don't know, I know a lot of like oil finishes, you'll do a, an oil and then a wax. Wax kind of as a protectant for the finish, I don't know. But at this point, it's kind of habit. I just do it because I've done it for a while. Seems to work all right. Let's uh, put some of the hardware back on. All right, first up, we're gonna do the recoil lug. Next up is our spring for a little hole right there. It goes into our trigger group. Next up, we'll do our sling swivel. And last up, butt plate, our little trap door, and our cleaning kit. Alright, so here's a Final look at it. You'll see, uh, maybe if the camera will pick it up, just ever so slightly some touches of green here and there that were left in the pores. But the stain blended it in pretty well. The most green I've found is right here, if that picks it up at all. But, for the most part, I'm really happy with how it turned out. Is it perfect? No. Is it good? Yeah. Is it green? No. And that's even better. I think wood stocks are supposed to look like wood. on the inside where I couldn't get all the green out of there. That's where you can really see it in there, but as long as you've got a barreled action in there, you never know. Well, folks, that about does it for this SKS stock. It, uh, I feel it's been successfully unbubbled or unbubberized. Luckily, it wasn't full bubba and it was still salvageable. It was some work. That paint was a lot more difficult than just stripping an old finish off. But I'm, I'm really happy with how it turned out. It was a fun project. I really like doing stuff like this and if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, share, subscribe, you know, all that stuff. It really helps me out. So I will go ahead and post a picture of before and after. And I guess until next time, I appreciate you. Thanks for watching.
need safety glasses for my safety glasses. 